looking at the last piece of armor, we're going to look at how to read the Bible. Not just kind of how we think we should. We're going to let the Bible illustrate that because the greatest illustration of biblical truth is the Bible. You see, the Bible was written as the, the illustrative guide, the, the examples to follow of every doctrine that God wants us to know how to apply. He applies it in someone's life. It's amazing. Everything God wants us to know how to do, he shows us how to do it in someone's life. So how do you read the Bible? There are some amazing people that we're going to look at this morning that allowed God's word to speak into their life on a daily basis, and it transformed them. And then when you're reading it, you go on from reading to not just letting it pass by, but to actually grabbing parts and studying it, trying to see the correspondence, the patterns, the purpose, the location, what God is doing, how it relates to what he's already said, how it ties into everything else he's going to say. That's what Bible study is. And as you study the Bible, there are some parts that are so unbelievably impactful to me that I memorize them, to you, that you memorize them. They become your personal treasures, your personal word of God that transforms you, that takes away fear, that takes away anxiety, that takes away the, the feeling of hopelessness or loneliness or emptiness that we've been talking about with the helmet of salvation. We memorize those, but memorization is only getting them, it's kind of like uh, getting it queued up and ready to go, the arrow or the bullet or the, the paper in the printer. It's, it's, it's just there for, for something further, and that further is what the Bible calls meditation. Well, stay there. What the Bible calls meditation. And meditation is when what we've read, what we've studied, what we've memorized begins to be a very part of us. It's the digestion. I remember with two current disorders that ravage many people of anorexia and bulimia, those spiritually are a part of every congregation. There are spiritually anorexic people they never eat the Bible. They hear all about eating it. They come here and hear about recipes of eating it. They just don't eat it. And then there are the, the vast majority of Christians are bulimic. They come in, they hear a big service like this, and they lose it all on the way out. And it doesn't really go in. In fact, John McCarthy used to say when I started with him many years ago, he said, we all come in with our little, actually, he said thimble. He's, I mean, can you believe he would say this? He said, I speak to 12,000 people. They're all holding a thimble. I'm trying to get as much into their thimble. And they stumble on the way out and dump it out. And he said, that's the state of the American church. So how do we get out of that? We make a choice to let God speak to us. When I read God's talking, when, I, when he's talking to me, I listen to what he's saying. I can't forget it. It's so good. And I began to think about it all day long. See, that's how you know if you really got anything out of your time with the Lord, if you can still remember what it was. And not just remember the facts, but you're actually holding on to it and chewing it. This is, the meditation is the digestion. You know, whatever you ate last night has become a part of you at the molecular level by now. All food, when it goes through digestion, fans out and it gets down to the molecular level. What in this book have you opened, chewed on, actually swallowed, and now is being digested so that you can use the Word of God? Did you know there's a spiritual gift? Theologians call it uh, the Word of Knowledge, some of them. Uh, some of them call it the, the Word of Wisdom that is still operative today. You know, a lot of people, the spiritual gifts, they just, it's kind of a mystery to them. Many of the spiritual gifts are operative today. This one is very operative for those that read and study and memorize and meditate. And what it is, is it's the spontaneous, the theologians define it, the spontaneous bringing to mind of a previously learned verse. That I'm confronted with a situation. I mean, think about, I work in a spiritual ER. There are people ferried to me or I go out on the ambulance to people that are, that are facing death, that are facing disease, that are facing disaster, that are facing terrible elements of depravity, either in their own life or others, and, and all that stuff. And, and either they're brought into the ER or we you know, run out in the ambulance to them. How do you know what to say to them? 
How do you know how to comfort them in their disaster as they're facing death, as disease is ravaging someone, as they're going through some horrible depravity of human life and, and warped treatment of them or their own lives? What do you say to them? Do, do you take your, your whole library? Do you take your file cabinet? No. What God promised is that what we have heard him say, that we have ingested, that, that we have actually swallowed into our life and allowed our spiritual systems to digest, he will bring to mind to use. I found that so many times in my life, that a verse that I had to learn when I was uh, doing uh, BMA, Bible Memory Association, or Awana, or Navigators, or had to learn it for some class, that I haven't thought about, other than when I pass by it when I'm reading through the Bible each year, at all. And all of a sudden, boom. And it's just like, it is exactly, I mean, you can see people. They'll be sitting there and they'll be in, in turmoil or, or in fear or in anxiety and you share that verse and they almost go like this and go, what did you just say? They heard it, but they, wa they want to hear it again. They want to they get it. And a lot of times they'll fumble around in their pocket or purse or whatever, and they say, I've got to write that down. I've got to write that down. They say, well, it's, it's actually written down. Well, then they've got to get a Bible, and they've got to mark it. And what it is is it's the spontaneous bringing to mind of a previously learned. How do you learn the Scriptures? I've taught seminary, Bible college, institutes. You don't need to go to an institute or a seminary or Bible college. You need to have the discipline of spending time listening to God every day, letting that word be opened as you invite him to open your eyes to behold wonderful things, actually ask him to bring it into your life, digest it so that you can live it out, and that will transform your life every day. How do you share life tra transformation with other people? By experiencing it yourself. That's the only way. So every one of us, every time we come before this book, we can invite God to speak into our life, to feed us, to nurture us, and we can ask him to help us understand how it fits and then lay hold on it and then actually let it to the molecular level of our spiritual being start transforming us.